And good morning, Turning Point. It's so great you're able to join with us today for Church Online. And don't forget, our churches are all back and running across the southeast of Melbourne. Look up Turning Point Churches Online and come and join us. Well, today we're going to be continuing to see how God has got an incredible plan for us. He's always planning for us to succeed. His plan is that we'll be prosperous. In fact, if we look in the Old Testament, this guy named Abraham, he trusted God and all of a sudden he was blessed. In fact, the Bible records that they know that God was with you because of how you were blessed at that time. Of course, there were camels and cows and sheep and all these other things that they had because the blessing of God was upon Abraham. I want to tell you today, the blessing of God can be on you. But the trouble is when we start to look at blessing, we always are looking for this one key. If I could just get the key of success, or if I could just get that one opportunity, or if I could just find that one business plan. You know, we often hear of the term, the overnight success. You know, as I've looked, most overnight successes have taken decades. They don't happen overnight. It takes this thing called work, that terrible four-letter word. Because, see, the truth is, many of us are trying to find ways to get to the top of the wall. Well, some, they climb up a couple of stairs and they say, it's just so hard. Others, they get halfway up and say, well, I'm going to quit there. But others need to learn that you've got to go and get the ladder. If there isn't a ladder, go and build a ladder. Because, see, God has intended every one of us to be successful, but we don't understand the principles of success because too often we're just simply looking at our self. I saw this little picture which helped understand to for us to achieve great things in God, what we've got to do is understand some of our core values. The thing I've found that's really interesting is people say, this is a great thing, and they go for six months, a year, and then all of a sudden they change their mind and they head over to this. And people are changing careers. They're changing spouses. They're changing jobs, countries. They're looking for some success in other things, but they forget one thing. The real key to success starts right here. The core values that we hold. And we've just got this little graph that says, yeah, some of the core values are the people you have around you, the quality of what you're going to be doing, the responsibility and really the accountability of what you are committing yourself to, that you're going to be trustworthy. And it doesn't happen without a team, and you've got to be creative, innovative. That we've got to see that these are the basic things that God has called us to do. But what can we learn from the Word as we go through? Well, one thing is for sure, things always seem to define us. You know, if you look at me, the first thing you notice is the good looks. Well, no, no, we know that's not true. First thing you notice is that I'm a tall person. And you think, oh, that now defines me. The skin colour, oh, that now defines me. How much hair I have, that now defines me. Well, the truth of it is, many of these areas don't define us, but we let them create control of our life. I want to go through and deal with some of these areas because, see, when we're looking at what defines us, we often so what would say it is the amount of money or the prestigious job I've got or the home I live in or the car or the family or the career. And we actually count them as our only successes. But let me tell you this. There's going to be times where you have money and there's going to be times where you don't. Jobs might come. Companies close down. Houses burn down, cars have accidents, families grow up and leave home. We've got all these different things that we say, this is who I am. Well, let me tell you, that's not who you are. That's some of the things that you do. See, we should live our dream as a successful person, a successful life. And if we were going to live our dream a successful life, what would it look like? Today, I'm going to go through some of these areas. See, there's three things that so often determine our future. Number one, our beginnings. Number two, 
our past, and number three is our present circumstances. And we say, that is my limit because of where I came from, what's happened with me in the past, and my present circumstances. Well, let's go through our beginnings. I don't really ever thought about that. But the beginnings of this guy called Jesus, well, were they really good? He was born into poverty. He had fled from one country to another, so he was a refugee. There was a lot of social stigma about him because he was from a low class. And they weren't even sure who his daddy was. Jesus had everything against him. His beginning was saying, you can't amount to much. But Jesus didn't live a small life. He lived a victory. Number two there, our past. Many of us would have a past. Many of us have things that would have limited us, stopped us. In fact, in the Bible, there's a guy named Paul. Well, if his past dictated him, he would have done nothing. We are privileged today to have so much of the Bible written by this guy. Why? Because something changed his life. His past didn't determine his future. What was his past? Well, he actually declares himself the worst of sinners. First Timothy chapter 1 says it like this. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the chief. Today, if you're struggling with things, let me just refer this to you. Jesus came into the world to save you, to give you a hope to give you a future. And that's what we need to see. But too often we also then say, but the circumstances I'm in, you may not have had a wealthy family to start you off. You may not have had all the education, you get the high paid job. And my present circumstances say that all I can do is this. Well, in the scripture, there's a widow who was identified as saying, this is my future. In fact, there's many of us that have gone through things where heartache's taken whole. There's been death in families, loss in jobs, businesses failing. Well, let me tell you this. God can take you beyond any circumstance. In fact, I just remember a story in the Bible where there was a bunch of fishermen and they'd fished all night and couldn't catch anything until Jesus turned up and said, cast your nets the other side. You're going to get an incredible haul. Today, the circumstances of you working all night, working all year, working for the last decade, struggling in business, just listen to God and we're going to see it. There's a Dr. Ruby Payne that years ago wrote a book called Bridges Out of Poverty. Now, poverty is not something just to do with dollars and cents. In fact, her research brought an incredible light and point it back to what Jesus was teaching. It says, what every member, a church member should know about poverty, a framework of understanding poverty. So what is this poverty thing? See, we need to learn, and as we know, God gave us 10 commandments for our life and relationship with one another, and our relationship with us and God. But she went through and she found there were 10 fundamental things. So I'm just going to Quickly mention them, get a book, or keep listening to Turning Point, and you'll get some insight on it. Number one thing, finance. Well, everyone says poverty is all about finance. No, that's just number one. Because the amazing thing about money is it comes and it goes. I remember many years ago, there was a building society that went into receivership. And there's a story of a man who had just sold his property, he was about to buy another property, but it wasn't quite ready. So he took all of his money that he'd worked for, invested into the house, sold the house, about to purchase the next, put it in this building society, and that week it went bankrupt. He lost everything. Money comes, money goes. But financial well-being is not about money, and we're going to deal with more of that. The other thing we need to deal with to be successful, we've got to have successful emotions. If we're emotionally unstable, it doesn't matter how much money you've got, I can be sure of one thing, you'll blow it. I know many people have earned large amounts of money and they've got nothing to show for it. Why? 
because they're emotionally unstable. So they've got to go and buy the new car or the new this or the new that to make them feel better because they're emotionally unstable. So they've got to spend and they don't feel complete. They don't feel successful unless they spend. Then, of course, to be successful, we need mental resources. Well, sometimes things happen and we struggle in that area. And praise God today, there is help for people who struggle. But more than that, there is a God who's going to help you through this. But if we don't have the mental insight, if we can't figure out it's better to put the money in the bank than to leave it sitting on the couch at home where someone can come and steal it, then we've got a problem. The next one is the spiritual aspect. And this lady discovered people who do not have a spiritual understanding do not have a plan of the future. Spiritual understanding means that I know where I fit into the plan of God. Well, some people have got different thoughts of who God is, but let me tell you this. If you know that there is a God who has an eternity for you, you plan well. You have a concept about how to live. You've got a moral running in your life. Number five is physical. Logically, if you aren't physically able to continue, then it's very hard to develop wealth. I met a person just the other day, doing well for a life, and involved in a car accident, and physically unable to do much at all. Her life has totally changed now. We've got to make sure her physical being is well. But we can control most of that by the way we eat, the way we deal, what we do. But they're the five of us as an individual. But it's interesting when she went through and put these together, then there are the five that talk about how we relate with people. It's like the Ten Commandments. There are those that command us to honour, love God, put his principles first, and then to care for one another. These principles here, how we get ourselves in order, then the next ones are what we do in relationship to others. One, we, or number six now we need, Support systems. Support systems that are going to be there because we are never being designed to run it alone. We are designed to live in community. That's how God planned us. We were planned to be in the presence of God. That Adam and Eve were planned to be together. And then there was a plan for family and that plan for interaction. Today, to be successful, social support networks beyond your family. And we're going to see that flows in the church relationships and role models a lot of people say i don't need anyone to help me i still remember when norma and i got married just after we got married we said we will now look for role models that have raised their children in a way that we think is great because then we will learn from them about what to do in our future we need to find role models in business in everything we do we need to acknowledge the hidden rules. Do you know there are some hidden rules? Like this one. Being dishonest will cost you everything. Some hidden rules. Being mean to people will mean you won't have support. Hidden rules. There are some rules and we've got to come to understand that. I still remember years ago, as a good friend of mine, he was <laughs> building a business Many other people tried to build the business. They had all failed, but he had succeeded. And I couldn't help but think, why is it that he succeeds and everyone else fails? I was talking to him one day and I suddenly realised this. He has a hidden principle. He was giving to his community. Not a Christian man, but he was giving things. We started a new outreach. He gave us a keyboard. We started uh, outreach into the halls. He gave us a PA system. Hidden rules, if you sow, you will reap. Number nine, language skills. If we can't communicate it, then guess what? People will not follow us. And coping strategies. When things go wrong, how will you cope? So the truth is, there will be times of up and down. But it's in the times of down where you build your strength, and that is where you create your future. So we've got to learn those. Those 10 points, five of them are relating to who and how we stand, five of them are relating to how we work with those around us. But today, I want us to go to the next step now. 
and see how does God simply put it together? Because this lady, Ruby Payne, states, faith communities have all the resources that people need to succeed and do well in life. I reckon that's pretty good that someone else has figured out that God's got it worked out for us. God's got an ultimate plan. Faith communities, you in the church today, you love Jesus. You have all the resources that you need to succeed and do well in your life. But some don't. Why is that? Because we struggle about things. We put other things first. The Bible tells us that in God and in his community, the church, we find all we need to live successfully the way he has planned us to live. But you've got to ask this question. How? Have you seen people who have struggled in the church? Have you even struggled? Well, we've got to start to put some principles, some of those hidden things into order. We have to move from a negative place to a positive place. I can be sure of this. If you say, I am always going to fail, you'll be pretty right. You will. Because you plan for it. You look for it. We need the sense of belonging, identity, and the creative new ideas. Who created the world? God did. And he made us in his image, creators. Why is it man can build houses, but the best we can do is get birds to build a nest? Why can we do these things when nothing else can? Because God breathed into us his personality. He breathed life into us. We need to know who we are, how we identify with God. And we've got to break what the world teaches that you're no better than some other lump of mud around. We didn't evolve from mud. We came from God. And we've got to see that. God and his church can prove this. How? We've got to change the way we think. There's a term many years ago. We've got to change our stinking thinking. What's that all about? Well, sometimes we think in a way that we bring negative. I still remember a lady I met years ago. She came to the Lord, but she could not give up. Oh, I'm just no good. And something good would happen in her life. She'd get a job. And then she wouldn't go to work because she's just not good enough for the job. She would get a friend. And then she wouldn't go and see that person anymore because she wasn't good enough for that person. Every time something good happened in her life, she thought that she wasn't good enough. And guess what? She didn't have any work, didn't have any friends. And I'm not sure, not sure where she is today because of it. She couldn't get that out of her mind. In many ways, it's like the Israelites. When they came out of Egypt, God rescued them, brought them out of slavery, heading them off to a promised land. But on their journey, they kept thinking, oh, Egypt wasn't that bad. I was a slave, but it wasn't that bad. I was getting beaten up, but it wasn't that bad. The Egyptians would just kill people, but that wasn't that bad. And they would say, this wasn't that bad. Let me tell you, we've got to break that and look to the success that God wants. Romans puts it this way. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may, by testing, you might discern what is the will of God. What is the good and acceptable and perfect that God has for you? God has for me. We've got to break it. Corinthians goes on and says it like this. Our desire is not that others might be relieved while you are hard pressed. But they are, but they are those who are, sorry, but that they might be uh, might be equally. At the present time, your plenty will supply what they need, so that in turn, your plenty will supply what you need. The goal is equality. As it is written, the one who gathers much did not much, and the one who gathers little did not much little. That little passage there talks about how we're all called to be equal in the presence of God. Sometimes we're successful. If you're successful, you know the best thing you can do? So it says, give. 
When we have plenty, give. When we have little, guess what? Give in principle. Give. There are times when we will struggle, there are times when we succeed. But God wants us to be equal. He wants all to do well. See, what does God say about it? He wants us all to be benefit. Don't be defined by your beginnings. Don't be defined by your past. Don't be defined by your present circumstances. Because, see, we need to be defined by what God says about us, you and me, the future God has for us. This is the truth. In second, oh, sorry, First Peter chapter 2. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are a people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. I want you to just think about that. I'm sure there's times where you fail. Things are going wrong. Relationships are broken down. Well, let me tell you this. You are a chosen person. You have been called out to be a representative of God, a holy priest. In fact, you're called to be part of the church, which is a holy nation. You are special in God's sight. And you have been identified to declare praises to God. He is the one who set you free from these things. He gives you identity. And that's where your success starts today. Be defined by your relationship with God. God wants you to have all the resources you need to be prosperous and successful. That has always been his plan. His plan is to carry you through. Let God and his church community help you. If you're not part of a church community, let me tell you, you're missing on one of the not-so-secret rules, but God's very clear. We are called to be in the church. Why? Because the manifold blessing of God is going to come through the church. That's what Ephesians tells us. But it says the gates of Hades will not stand against the church. That's what Matthew tells us. It says that Jesus is coming back for his church. It says it so many times in the scripture. And if we are hiding from the church, let me tell you this. You are hiding from success. Because success is in the presence of God. How do we take hold of this? Well, we've got to get our mind renewed. We need people around us, but the central thing must become the Word of God. You know, as I talked about the Israelites coming out of Egypt, they're about to head into the Promised Land, but after 40 years, they're still struggling with believing for God. You know, sometimes there's been Christians going to church for years, and they're still struggling to believe God. And I've discovered this one thing. Too often, they don't know the word of God. Before the Israelites went in their promised land, Joshua in chapter 1 verse 8 said this, this book of the law, that's what they called the Old Testament, shall not depart from your mouth, but you will meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do all according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous. Oh, and then you will have great success. Would you like to be prosperous? Would you like success? Well, get hold of the Word of God. And some people say, but I read the Bible. Yeah, meditate on it. Make it come part of your life. See how you can live it out, not just read the text, not just said I did my five-minute reading, not just our reading plan. You know, we've got reading plans happening every weekday. We've been doing this for 10 years to help the church slowly change their mind, their thinking, Get the Word of God. Reading plans that we put out, if you haven't got it, get onto our website, grab hold of the latest one. But in the same breath, that's not the answer to read it. Meditate. Take it in. Read a large amount of passage. Then take one or two small, small parts and say, how can I live it? Meditate on it day and night, not one minute. And you might be careful to do all according. You make it life in you. And then you will be prosperous and successful. 
Today, I've got a simple answer. Planning to be successful? Take the Word of God. In it, it talks about finance. It talks about emotional health. It talks about stabilities. It talks about relationships. All those 10 factors before, you'll never guess where you find answer for every one of those 10. The Word of God. If you're not sure how, keep listening. You're going to find out. Let God define us. The success that he has for you is what he's always planned. Jeremiah chapter 29 simply says it this, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Plans for welfare, for care, for looking after. He has got all that you need, your prosperity, and not for evil. He's going to give you a future and a hope. Today, if you're struggling, understand what I'm talking about. And you say, I need to succeed. I need to get in that place. Well, it's very simple. You need Jesus as Lord of your life. And then follow what he instructs you through the word. I pray today that as you've listened to this, you would be challenged to say, success is not in what you can do, but success is what God is in you because then you will find your way successful. Bless you. I look forward to seeing you in church very soon.